Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode where we ask the question, is it time to evolve your art style? But before we get onto that, we want to say a big thank you to our latest Kofi supporter, Chloe Chapman. Your support, Chloe, really helps us to keep this podcast going. So we really do appreciate it. Yeah, we always really appreciate the support. Not only does it help us towards the cost of running Kicking the Creatives, but it also helps us keep doing what we do and it shows you like what we do. So and if you can't, you. yeah, if you can't support us by Kofi, obviously you can share the episode um, on your social media and things like that. That always, or leave us a review, that always helps. So, yeah, even if you can just send it to one friend and tell them about it, that really helps us. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, Okay, so we also want to thank everyone who's been sharing their work for the challenges with us on social media. And oh my gosh, there's so much. May is is another popular month, isn't it? Um, We've got Russell, now I don't know how to pronounce this surname, Russell Stasiuk, Stasiuk. (laughs) I'm so sorry, Russell, I I don't know how to pronounce your surname. So I'm going to say Russell Stasiuk. Uh, He's doing the Miniature May have you seen his miniature May work? He's been no. doing these little snail drawings. No, I miss those. Oh, well, what's what's good is he's actually using the challenge to illustrate a book that I believe his wife is writing. So they've got a, a really cool collaboration going on. So that's that's good. Um, yeah, and they're really, really sweet little drawings. Um, Julie Turner, she's been doing some amazing flower drawings for uh, Blooming Marvellous May. And they're so vibrant. You must have seen those, like dandelions and daisies. And she sort of, I love how she photographs her art because she tends to photograph it, you know, on the page with a pencil sort of lying next to it, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, it looks really really nicely staged. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What's caught your eye? So I've really liked what Katie Taylor Bastian has been doing. I don't know if you've seen her non-dominant hand drawings. I've seen a lot of those and they're brilliant. These, yeah, these are on Instagram. Yeah. And oh my God, she's not just using pen, she's using different media. Mm. I assume all with a wrong hand. Um, but oh my God, the faces, they're just fantastic. I absolutely love those. And then also, I don't know if you've seen some Massey on Instagram. She did this really amazing Face Tastic Friday. She's used um, pastels and charcoal and something else. I can't remember what it was. But I couldn't believe she's done it with a non-dominant hand. But it's one of those ones that you can imagine it really, really large and standing back because it's very, very loose. And I love that one. Absolutely loved it. Um, Anyway, what is new with you? And I know there's quite a lot. Well, there's not really. (laughs) Yes, there is. Oh, no, I mean... What's new with you inspired this episode? Uh, Well, yes. Okay. So uh, I'm working on something a little bit different. Um... I wouldn't call it wild. (laughs) So while I'm sort of between paintings, I'm I'm having a bit of an experiment. So I don't know where it's going to take me. Um, I was saying to you, Tara, wasn't I, that I felt like I'm a bit of a crossroads recently and maybe felt like a little bit of a change. And I've always believed that an artist should do whatever they feel is right for them. Um, so I'm going with my gut for a bit. You know, when we first started this podcast, I've said I said a few times, didn't I, that when I started this whole art thing years ago, so many people said, loosen up, do this, do this. And I'm like, no, I want to do it my own way because I want it to be from me. And I did. And I was very defiant about that. But now um, I'll tell you what, I'm having fun. You need a drum roll with this. Have you got a drum roll for me? No, you can add one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that with my mouth. Yeah. With a bit of <gasps> mixed media. Oh my god! I was so shocked when you told me this. Mixed media, me? I know. <laughs> I mean, I'm an oil painter. I paint with oils, and I thought, you know what? I'm I'm going to change it up a bit. And uh, you should have seen my studio the other day. Oh my god! It was it was like you know those artists that you know what I call the real artists, the ones that have just 
stuff everywhere. You know, I had acrylics out, I had inks, I had God knows, I had everything. Anyway, when I'm telling you this, you're going to think that I went wild in this canvas. And I expected to. I thought, yeah, I'm going to use this, I'm going to use that. And uh, I'm going to gonna really do something different. But it's not that different. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I need to work on it. Did you I use the acrylics, though? So? Uh, yeah, I used the acrylics. I've used um, charcoal. Did you like the acrylics? Yeah, I bought some of those. I bought some of those golden acrylics. It's funny actually because I was looking at the reviews on them, and because uh, I the ones I used to use were those sort of System Three ages and ages ago. You know, they're kind of big tubes and they're quite yeah. Sort of, they're not heavy body, but they are. You know, you squeeze them and they stay in a blob if you're not yeah. in. So these golden acrylics, I've heard a lot about them, and um, I thought I'd really like a set of those. So I got a set of those, and. Um, I was reading the, the reviews and a few people were saying, God, they're tiny bottles, absolute tiny. What, you know, it's a lot of money for basically what's a f- <laughs> hardly any Paint. stuff in it, yeah. you know. But, and somebody else was saying, yeah, but it goes such a long way. You just need a drop. So anyway, I was, I was reading all these arguments about this and I thought, you know what, I'm going to order some. I'm going I'm to order some myself and I'm going to make my own mind up. So I ordered some and I'll tell you what, <laughs> One drop of this stuff, um, I threw half of that away at the end of it. I actually put some retarder in oh, it. Oh, gel retarder. Yeah. So that made it go further. When I used it as on its, you know, neat, it just dries incredibly quickly on the palette. And I, I haven't got one of those. Um, I chucked it away years ago. <laughs> I used to have one of those stay, dry, stay wet palettes. I haven't got one of those anymore. Uh, it just dries so quickly. But this stuff really sort of helped it you know, helped it Yeah, stay wet. Yeah, so I use that. I use a bit of tar- charcoal, a bit of Conti crayon. And, wow. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm having a play. It may or may not work. I may look at it at the end and think, well, that was an absolute waste of time. Can you tell us what it's of? Because you still haven't told me properly what it is yet. Um, And I don't know if you're winding me up what you're telling me. Oh, the subject? Is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, bum. <laughs> a bum. A great big bum. Why? Actually, Why? two bums. Two big bums in my studio at the moment. It's a bit disconcerting, actually, because it's actually my own bum. <laughs> oh, no. but, and I'm not saying I've got a giant bum, but I'm saying what I had to do, obviously, I've had to kind of like make a it naked much, bum. much bigger on canvas. <laughs> a naked bum. <laughs> yeah, of course. I yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. A naked bum. No, I didn't know if it was going to be like Roving Jay's, you know, bums with no. bikinis like riding up your bum. <laughs> no, no. I I decided because uh, I love funny enough. And I, <laughs> I could just imagine you standing there taking pictures of your ass. <laughs> That's exactly what I had to do because I thought no one else was going to model for me, so I'm just going to do it. And uh, but of course, what I did is then I played around with perspective because I thought I it, I don't want it to be. To, in fact, I've got, funny enough, I've got two canvases on the go at once. Oh, gasp. Wow. <laughs> and uh, one of them I kind of did in the in the kind of normal. Both with bums? Yeah. Right. One, one I played around more with a perspective um, and one was more sort of just as it is. So I guess I, pl- I thought I played and then I realised actually I could play a bit more with that. Um, so I changed the perspective. But, of course, by doing that, I've made um, my own bum. <laughs> significantly in this. bigger than what it really is ah, so it's been quite it's been quite unsettling so what's the realism bit then i can't i'm not gonna tell you everything oh, I'm, not tell, I'm not gonna tell you everything there'd be no you know this is what i've been missing i've been missing that ta-da moment so that's why i want to kind of like and also but what's funny is we were talking about this the other day kind of by text back and forth and i was saying oh I might even use, did I say this? I might even use a credit card or something like this. I can't remember what I said to you. Or oh, sponge even, brushes, sponge I suggested. Sponge brushes, yeah. yeah. I am still going to use that. I've got some of those arriving today. Sponge with, brush? Yeah, a sp- uh, not a sponge brush, a sponge roller. Like All a right. Roller. I've got some clear gesso coming. Um, yeah, so this this is a, what I would say is I almost feel like I need to apologise for this in advance because I said to you, Tara, Oh god, this is going to be so wild! I don't. It, for your standards, you're going to go. Yeah, that's not wild. <laughs> but so it's not abstract at all, then. No, it's not abstract. No. Oh, because you were saying you were doing an abstract. No, no, it's not realism. It's not realism. Do you, do you know what I mean? I, I okay, so it's to... looser. It's looser. 
it's it, it's it's just looser. It's not realism. You wouldn't look at it and think, oh, wow, that looks a bit like a photo or anything right. like that at all because yeah. you yeah. just know it isn't. But it's not wild either. It's it's not wild. Yeah. But, you know, you have to try these things and you 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 kind of – it's like anything, isn't it? When you're, you're learning something new, you start slowly. And I'm going to talk about this a bit later. You don't have to go in feet first. You can sort of just experiment a bit. But I do want to ask you a question, Tara, because okay. – I was going to say I would love if you were here for the day yeah. or I was there for the day yeah. with – the stuff that I use, I would love to get you making like an ink face. Oh, you I know how I make that. them just to try it. I'd love to try that. I really yeah. would. I'd love to try that. I'd almost be, do you know, I almost need somebody to shop me in a room and say, right, these are the materials you've got, make something, and you've, yeah. you've got an hour. <laughs> yeah, I should do that sometime. Yeah. So, okay. So, obviously, I love working on canvas. Yes. I do feel like we're chatting about this too much, but then it is, it, but it is, the, it is basically about the subject we're talking about in a way yeah. isn't it so um people i've heard people say they like listening on a chat where i've been oh really oh, yeah it's just, just as well isn't it Cause yeah <laughs> that's what you get about 30 percent of most episodes are just us talking a load of crap at the beginning but no this um this is kind of really relevant but i wanted to ask you about this try because obviously you know i work on on canvases Cam- and I have done for years and years, yeah. and years and obviously I work I, I, in mixed media sketchbooks for for sketching and all that but yeah can you get great big 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 pieces of heavy duty heavy duty paper I haven't actually looked into this I should have looked into it myself really I want to experiment yeah but if it goes wrong I don't want it to be necessarily on a canvas that's cost you know 40 no. quid but yeah. at the same time if I if it goes right and goes really well, I want to sell it with confidence that that is going to be a stable piece yeah. of work and it's going to last. I do not yeah. want to buy it. I would never want to sell a piece of art that I didn't think it was going to last, you know. No. So that's, that's so you could, thing. I could tell you what else you could do, and that is just um, buy a, you know, hot press watercolour paper, large sheet hot press watercolour paper, heavyweight, yeah. and gesso mm. that, couldn't you? Yeah. I'm, I might pay, pay a visit to my art store, um, my local yeah. art store weekend and have a little look see what they got because i love that sort of i want to go big but canvases yeah. big canvases are blooming expensive yeah you know no. i'll send you a link to other thing anyway okay. yeah so that's what's new with me i'm ju- i'm just having a bit of a bit of a um bit of a play at the moment i don't know if it'll lead anywhere i don't know if it'll lead me straight back to where i came from i have no idea but i am yes i'm, I'm having a great deal of fun it's it's i'm having fun what about you Tara, what's new with you um, I don't know if I've got much new new because I've just been continuing with my mixed media mm. <laughs> using charcoal. And I have to say, I am still loving that style of using and that method of using charcoal with a roller. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, I was searching for a way of working where I could just be quite free. Yeah. I think I found it in that. And yeah. then also what, what I've been doing lately, I, I decided I wanted to try and push push this style not not as in style necessarily but towards a subject area yeah um so maybe i could appeal to certain people and it would have to be something that i was interested in obviously you mean other than from... faces no no so i still wanted to go faces mm-hmm. but it but i kept on thinking who will like these faces so it's like i started to think and i don't know if i've mentioned this before but i've started to look at steampunk yes I, yeah i saw you mention that on twitter that? i think you said I on twitter ah uh, so i was sort of started looking because basically i did this painting and it looked quite science fictiony mm. it wasn't even intentional but i thought well maybe i could go for a sort of steampunk or a science fiction vibe so i've been pushing a few towards that direction rather than just being a pure face if you, yeah. if you know what i mean so it's a face but with that feel but if, funnily enough i've been trying to get this steampunk vibe going on but they look like sort of performers or circus <laughs> rather than <laughs> steampunk. I've liked them still. Yeah. You know, I've really liked them, but they haven't really necessarily looked because of the colours I think I'm using. Because so I've been going for some like real bright pinks and some reds and stuff like that. So, mm. yeah, but I have, have enjoyed that. And um, uh, funnily enough, I was, I was saying to you before we came on air, I've also found that NFTs have been a way of selling my physical art. And I don't want to go into NFTs again because we covered that a lot. But I, I wasn't really selling physical art before. But now I'm finding that people want my physical art. 
maybe it's because you're getting to out to a different community of people yeah that, a different that, audience yeah, yeah that actually other people that want to buy your stuff rather than because before yeah, I, I guess you didn't you weren't in touch with any of that community at all were you no and uh and maybe more on Instagram, it tends to be artists looking at other artists' work. I know people do sell on there, hmm. but maybe Twitter is where more of my, you know, the people who might like my art are. It is very interesting, your your work, and it's funny because your work is very much evolving, but it's when you actually look at the... I remember when you did your first... Um, you find your art style experiment. Yeah. And you... You had a style already, and I'd always always said to you, you've got a style, Tara, and it will evolve naturally. But you pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. And and actually, it's quite funny because when you look, very, if you look at your Instagram and you go right back, it's surprising. You, you had a style all along. It's still your style, but it's evolved into something. You've pushed it to a whole another, another level. Well, it's funny. I saw someone on Twitter say something that I thought was so apt and he was talking about artists uh, have a, have different styles but they have a fingerprint yeah and I thought that was a so much better way of putting it so what I think you always talk about is my fingerprint yeah I as guess in you can is. tell I've touched it but yeah. I've probably worked in multiple styles yes yeah there's, yeah. A, there's this thread this sort yes of and I think thread. the fingerprint is you can tell I've touched it but yeah yeah Oh, I like that. It's nice because now I feel like you're embracing your style rather than constantly trying to move it on to something new. Change it, yeah. Yeah. And and you bore so easily with with your own stuff. So this is the longest, I think, where I I can feel the excitement in in you when you're creating something, whereas before it was always, I love what I'm doing, but I can't wait to, to do the next thing. This time you're kind of more... Um, yeah this time I I like what I'm doing yeah yeah and before we started recording I was asking you about um a piece you'd put up on one of those what I thought it was an app but it was photoshop you know the piece of art that you put in a a frame yeah it looked incredible having do you know what when you can put a piece of art as though it's hanging in a room it changes the whole thing doesn't it to you can really see what it could look like somewhere and and I loved that I thought that was amazing I mean that's a way to sell your art isn't it yeah I think it definitely gives it a more polished look doesn't it and it, it lets people if people can't imagine things and they always say people can't imagine things don't they yeah then it gives them a feel though I always think well if I only my room actually looked like that yeah exactly it's always in these <laughs> spectacular yeah. rooms like dressed rooms yeah <laughs> anyway let's get on to the episode so when is it time to evolve your art style and as I kind of said a bit earlier it seems really appropriate to talk about this today because you know I have felt like I've been in a little bit of a well like a crossroads I've been at this crossroads and and Tara and I we always like to try and share our own experiences as artists with you um so I said to Tara a little while ago oh you know I feel that I need to sort of I need to sort of change a little bit I need to shake things up and I said oh perhaps we could do do an episode on it and you were like yeah let's do that so so this is this is us sort of sharing our take on things and me sharing you know what I'm doing with you at the moment so but what I want to say first is that so Sandra says all that like And I just thought, oh, yeah, she's feeling a bit down about her art at the moment. Not for any reason. It's just that, you know, a little bit of a rut thing, maybe. And so we say what what we do is go and write bullet points for the episode. So she's (laughs) done her bullet points. And I think, okay, I better go do mine. And I go on there and there's the longest list of (laughs) bullet points I've ever seen in my life. So I thought, oh, my God, she really has got an issue with this. I've never seen so many bullet points. (laughs) Yeah, and there's a few there was a few reasons which we'll go into over the episode. Um and and please don't anyone think that I you know, I'm bored of my own style or work or I'm really not, but I just recognize that there's a, I'm at a point where I need to 
even if it doesn't go out there, even if it doesn't work and I carry on with what I've been doing, I need to try something different. That's, I, I guess that's what I need to do. So I guess you need to ask yourself, don't you, what, what are the telltale signs that you're ready to evolve or even maybe change direction completely? Because obviously, especially new artists, they won't really know where they're going. So it's, you know, it's fine for them to just completely divert if they want to. But for me, I think um, the first indication for me is when I was feeling, this sounds sounds bad, but it, it feels like my work has become too easy and I, I just don't feel challenged by it anymore. So, you know, I'm not saying it is easy what I'm doing at all and it's not a challenge, but for me, I, I, if, if I sort of think, oh, I really would love to, you know, draw those or paint those marbles or paint these bottles I kind of I feel like it's not going to be a challenge at all I just know I can do it and that (laughs) that sounds bad but that's how I feel now I don't know about you Tara but I actually enjoy a bit of a challenge um in fact I know you like a challenge of course I do yeah yeah. why, why do you think we set up this whole kick in the creative things to challenge people I do love a challenge um one of the challenges I set myself a long long time ago many years ago was to learn to paint and learn to paint in that sort of old master's sort of technique style. And and I, you know, I know how to do that. And I've developed my style on the basis of that. And I love it. The problem is that when I reach a goal, I, I always feel like I then need to move the goalpost. So I'm kind of always making some kind of progression. And I suppose I haven't moved that goalpost for a while. And I, I think... If you don't do that, then things start getting a bit too easy for too long. And then when that happens, you kind of lose that sense, don't you? That sense of achievement when you've created something new. Um, I I think you actually slightly, um, not progress yourself, but slightly change directions when you started adding flesh into your work. So that was probably one little evolve you did. And now you probably feel like I know how to do that now. Yeah, I mean, that's a, I do love painting figures and I love painting flesh and I love, you know, so yes, I definitely wanted to bring that element into my paintings. Um, so I, I was setting up a new painting and I knew exactly what my finished piece was going to look like before I even started it. So it felt like there's, there's no puzzle to the painting anymore and I love the puzzle of trying to figure out how I'm going to get something to work how am I going to create that kind of metallic look or how am I going to create I don't know that sheen or that gloss or that that translucency how am I going to do that I kind of feel like I've I know all that now so it's almost like having a puzzle taking out the box and it's already put together do you know what I mean oh yeah so so I feel like I need that that to feel that have that feeling again of, oh, right, okay, well, how would, I, how would I go about this? Even if it's just being challenged by the actual medium, not necessarily the style, but just like, oh, how's this work then? All oh, this is different. Just that feeling of trying to work something out. I'm, I'm missing that. I think that's what it probably uh, yeah, is. Yeah, I think you're in the perfect position as well because you have all these skills behind you. And like, say, for example, if I suddenly decided I was going to, try something really new and it involved oils or whatever I have to learn how to paint that way yeah, first yeah, do you know what I mean yeah. Whereas I think you're you're in quite an enviable position because you've got all these skills so now I think you can bend it to any any different way you want it's like Picasso and all these big artists a lot of them could paint amazingly couldn't they yeah. and then they started pushing it to do abstraction or pushing it to do all these different things yeah yeah so yeah, I think you're really lucky that way. Anyway. Yeah, I hadn't thought of it like that. But no. Yeah. But there's also that learning element, isn't there? I guess that's something what you're talking about almost like with the using the acrylics. You've got to learn how to use those, haven't you? And that could be whether it's learning a new medium or learning to try do something new. And I think I actually love learning stuff. And I think we need to do that to make new discoveries and to to push ourselves almost. Yeah. Um, and it's those happy accidents, isn't it? I don't know if you've had any happy bum accidents yet. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, no, do you know what? I haven't had a happy. That's a, another thing. I haven't had a happy accident for, for a happy such a long accident. time. And I remember painting with the oil paintings when I very first started. That I was thinking, oh, that blurred line which I soften with my hand, and I'm like, oh, that really works. And I'd sort of done it, sort of just to wipe a bit of fluff off, and it just so happened. Bit of fluff off your bum. <laughs> No, no, I'm talking about when I first started oil painting. Yeah, I know. And one of the paintings I was doing, there was this kind of bit of fluff that got stuck and I just brushed it with my hand. It just happened to be over, you know, a line and, and it softened it and, and it just gave this this out of focus, soft focus look. And I thought, oh my gosh, that really works. And it wasn't meant to happen. And it made, I was, it was a better painting for it. And I really, I really embraced that. I thought, right, I'm going to use that again. Those kind of happy accidents. I love it's exciting, those. isn't it, those? Mm. That, and that is, well, as you know, that's how I've got the style I'm doing now. Mm, it was yeah. partially an accident of that picking up the wrong tube of paint. Oh, well, and st- picking up white gouache instead of matte medium. Yeah. And I just love that because it's, it's like, I would have never thought of doing that. And then you run with it, don't you? And you carry on and then that comes into every piece of work you do or a lot of the pieces of work you do after that. There's, there's also that thing, isn't there? And I don't know if this is just like an envy thing because we see so much different art, but it's when you see other people's art and you think it's more exciting than yours. Yes. But I think some of that also comes down to the way our likes and dislikes, they change over time because maybe the art probably that you like now might not be the art that you liked, say, when you started oil painting. I don't know if that is the case. I don't know. I mean, I, I love uh, such a huge, eclectic mix of styles in art. I mean, you know, if you actually saw the people that I look at, you'd think, God, you'd never think, an art, you know, an artist like you would be interested in that kind of art. But just like in my sketchbook, you know, I, I do cartoons and things like that. No, but going back, say, when you first started oil painting. Mm. Oh, no, I wouldn't do it then. Yeah. Your, no, your taste in art... Yeah, I'm guessing was very different to it is now. Yeah, I think I think when you are in this kind of network, you see so much more than you ever would, wouldn't you? Because yeah, I mean the amount of art that we see on a daily basis just by going onto our group and seeing what people put in, and and just by being in touch with so many different artists, you get to feel, you get to see so many different varieties of art. So you're exposed to a lot more of it, aren't you? And you start getting it a bit more, you know. Yeah, and I think that also leads to you probably wanting to push your own in different ways. Yeah, I think it, you can get kind of to that point where you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I, oh, I think I quite, quite like to lunge at my canvas now and, and start seeing what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, I have not lunged at all. You're going to be so disappointed when you see this. You'll be like, oh, I'm okay. looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> I think this is just going to be, what I'm doing now, I think is a stepping stone. I don't That's necessarily right. think it's going to be, you know, you're not going to say, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're not going to say that. But I mean, that leads me to the next thing. It's like, when you feel in a rut, and that's probably what you were feeling, wasn't it? You, sometimes you just need to change it a little bit because you're bored. It doesn't have to be forever. Mm, no. But that is what you're doing, isn't it? You're in a bit of a rut, so let's just change it up a bit, try something a little bit different. Yeah, and like you say, it doesn't have to be forever. You know? No. No. When when I've got a painting on the go, right, so, so you know, so they say I had the Coke can or the bottles and something's on my, my easel and I'm like, oh, I really, I can't wait to get back to it tomorrow. Or maybe I've got to let those layers dry. So I'm like, oh, I so want to get back to that. And I've kind of not been getting so much of that feeling lately. So when, you know, normally I would be itching to get to, back to my painting. Um, and that's an obvious sign that I'm absolutely loving the process and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. But if you're finding yourself like I was sort of procrastinating between paintings and deciding that maybe cleaning the toilet is more important, (laughs) that could be a sign that you kind of need to change things up a little bit. So, of course, it might also be a sign that you're just scared to fail at what you're doing in case that's a different thing altogether. You know, that's not a time to shake things up. That's a time to stick with what you're doing, get onto it, you know, until you've nailed it. That's a different thing. But, yeah, if, if you find yourself... No, not excited to get back to it and not feeling that oh I can't wait to get back in the art room today 
that that could be a sign that perhaps you need to find something that you will feel excited about. Yeah, I think you can also get that thing where you're envious of why other artists approach their work. And I don't mean even their results of their work. It's just, if you actually see them, because often now people show these time lapses, don't they, on their yeah. Instagram. And you look at them and you just think, oh, God, they just... I mean, for me, I look at some people and just think that looks just so free. And I used to look at Lewis Rosignol's work and be so envious mm. of how loose he appeared to be in his art. He'd just get this bit of charcoal. He'd be like, oh, I'm just going to roll a bit of charcoal over here, you know, take a bit of ink and going to mix it over here. And I used to be doing those colourful paintings. Yes. And it just, and I, I really liked the end result, but I wasn't free in doing them because it was a much more methodical I guess approach yeah Um, and I I really just wanted to get like really lost and feel in the zone and experimental and see see what happens you know let's see what happens with this rather than have this methodical approach where I know I start with this and I'll start with that and then I'll do this it's it's that experimental thing isn't it which you love yeah, it's yeah. Like expressiveness. There's something I always used to feel what was missing was that I couldn't lose myself in it. And I, you used to lose yourself when you were doing your oil paintings, wouldn't you? Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and because I still of, do. But yeah. but, yeah, there's other things that I feel I'm, I need. <laughs> yeah, and I would get a rush. I, I get a rush sometimes now when I'm doing these. Mm. And I guess some of that is because it's almost like you were saying before, I don't know what, I never know and if the, any of these new pieces are going to look like when I start. Yeah. Because they evolve as I'm doing them. Yeah. And I really like that. Yes, absolutely. And it's a bit like these ones I'm doing. I had a kind of image in my head of kind of what I wanted to do. And then, you know, didn't, <laughs> which is far wilder than what, what's actually there. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's turning out differently. But it's, you know, I'm, I'm Did going Did you sketch to- this first or what have you done it? I know you photographed your bum. Oh no, I did. I did scratch. I did sketch on um, paper just to for the layout and see if it would work on the size canvas. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's all. Um, and a bit of charcoal and whatever. But I feel like I could. You see, at the moment, what I need to do is I need to seal seal what's there, and then seal seal what's there because obviously it's charcoal and things like that. Oh, I, I see. And I yeah. want to work over it. Yeah, but I don't. Obviously, I don't really want to smudge all the charcoal all over the place that I've done. But as, you know, you you probably would want to do that. But at the moment, I, I'm not quite. I don't know. So I want to seal it, then um, work over the top of it, and maybe what I'm looking at at the moment will evolve. Do you know what I mean? Maybe it will evolve yeah. into something more different. I don't know. And that's that's what I quite like about this. What I'm doing is that yes, at the moment it looks one way. But I don't know if um, next weekend I might look at it and think, wow, all these lines and stuff all over it. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I might choose That's to the keep fun, it. isn't it? Yeah, I might choose to keep it as it is. I might choose to. But if I do smudge the charcoal everywhere because it didn't seal it or whatever, then I'm just going to try and embrace it and think, okay, well, so how can I work with this then? That's, yeah. that's, the, that's the plan, Tara. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> And I suppose, you know, when you feel you've become too predictable, you know, that's another indication to try something different. It doesn't mean to say that you've got to change your style like completely. It might just mean that you want to try a new subject or a new medium or maybe you just want to add an interesting element to your paintings. So, you know, when you keep producing the same kind of art because you feel you should, because that's what your collectors or your followers are expecting, then there is that danger, isn't there, of becoming a bit too predictable and not evolving because you want to please everyone else. It's way more important that you follow your own path as an artist than it is to do what everyone thinks you should be doing. The worst thing you could do is become bored of your own work because it will show in your finished pieces without a doubt. Do you know what I'm really hoping to see in yours? Some drips. Oh, drips? Some drips. Yeah. Oh, there's no drips. You wouldn't <laughs> oh. want to see drips coming out of a bum anyway, <laughs> would you? <laughs> Not out of a bum, but out of somewhere else in the painting. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Tara. I, I just don't know how it, I don't know what's going to happen. I really so don't. You have faces on the bums. <laughs> well, probably, maybe, maybe that's something you could do. Maybe you could introduce some I'll drums. I'll draw one afterwards <laughs> for you. We'll do a collab. 
do you know, I've always liked drawing figures and um, the, the best kind of figures, and I, this is why I love Roving Jay with her beach bums, actually. They're never these perfect little sort of, I don't know, 25-year-old bottoms, are they? <laughs> they're, they're proper, you know, real bums and it's great, you know. And, and I, I love figure drawing, but I only like drawing people that are not, don't have you know perfect yeah yeah. and uh yeah so it's quite interesting and I I wanted to make because when I was drawing when I was drawing on the canvas this looks just a bit too ordinary I need to I don't know big it up a bit (laughs) 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 I need to play around with this a bit so it was interesting just that part of it was quite interesting do you know what I wouldn't like? If you're going to reveal that, you've just told every that this is your ass. Well, no, it's it's my bum in the loosest sense. It started as my bum, but to be honest, you know, I I, I think that by the time you see it on the canvas, it'll be incredibly different. <laughs> it won't really be my bum, so I'm quite comfortable with that. Okay. And I've actually had more compliments about my bum than I ever have my face. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not that bothered. All right. <laughs> Yeah. But there are, of course, good reasons not to change your style. Um, mm. Don't do it to please someone else, you know, because you always obviously used to get told, loosen up, loosen up. Yeah. And if you don't, if you feel like you're really enjoying your art style and you feel like it's you, go for it. You know, you don't have to be completely out there because someone said that's what's selling. Just because someone says that, there will be a market or a niche. Um, for what you do you just have to find those people not everybody likes every different thing you know so we can tell you go on to one platform people like I've said you know I'm now on Twitter and people seem to like my art on Twitter um I want to say like I don't mean it like that what I mean is people will buy it more on Twitter whereas if I go on Instagram you know I don't get anything yeah it's funny isn't well, it hardly, some yeah. people sell hand over fist on instagram but don't do well on twitter it's just interesting yeah. i guess it's about the type of work what what type of work does better i mean when i look at twitter there's a whole lot more wild and out there style work yes so basically just don't change style to please someone else only change it if it if it's what you feel that you need yeah because if somebody had said to me a year ago even and said okay right I think now you, it's time for you to to shake things up a bit. You need to try something new. I'd have probably felt like, no, well, I, I, if I'm ever ready or feel I want to do that, I will. But until then, I've learned in the past, if you push, if you allow someone else to push you in a direction you don't want to go in, you don't, you end up just not liking what you do anyway. So it's not, it's not fun doing that. So definitely only, you have to follow your own path. You have to be ready to do these things. You know? Yeah. I mean, I've had someone before and he, he was doing a helpful sense. He actually knows what he's doing, like a, an agent Yeah, who, who has said to me, um, you know, think about making your art more commercial, go out there, have a look, like go in the shops. This was for licensing more. Go look what faces are selling in the shops or what people are doing with faces that sell and then push your work more in that direction. Yeah. But it doesn't work for me because as soon as I've seen something in the shop, I don't want to do that because somebody's already done it. You want to be unique, don't you? Yeah. You yeah. know, that, that's, that's, a, that's the difference. You want and to take on influences, but you don't want to be that similar. No, definitely not. No. And and also, you don't need to change your style. I mean, change as in you don't need to change it completely. I mean, it would be ridiculous if I suddenly said, right, that's it. I'm packing up what I'm doing. I'm I'm completely changing. I'm only going to do abstract paintings. You know, that's fair enough if I wanted to do that. That's different. But you don't have to do that. There's a difference between evolving and changing. And and this is obviously important if you're a selling artist and you're known for something in particular. If you've got collectors, you don't want to suddenly turn around and go, actually, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm doing going a completely different way. Um, but I was looking at some work. Oh, you know, I was talking last, I think it was the last podcast we recorded. I was talking about, um, I'd been to a gallery and there was some Christian Hook paintings yes. in there. Yeah. And they were amazing. But I noticed that he'd, you know, he'd been, he'd kind of started adding some random text, like in red 
paint to some of his recent work. And I'd not seen that from him before. And there were a few other elements that were different to his normal approach. But what was really clever is that the bones of the work were still very, very obviously his. He just added some interesting things to his paintings, which gave them that kind of element of surprise and like, huh, oh, yeah, oh, he's done that this time. But, uh, you know, when you walked in, you could still see they were all Christian hooks. Yeah. But he, he, he does a lot of, um, like when he does faces, I mean, he, he almost does them all. It's like being on a um, like cinematic effect, isn't it? Where they, I don't know if you know what I mean by that. No. We're kind of like, like almost moving pictures. Oh, yes. The way, yeah, pulls paint around. Yeah. 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 Well, breaks it I, up. But he still very much has these most amazing eyes and, you you know, you look at it and think, wow, the, the detail in that face is incredible. But then he's pulled them all apart and somehow it just makes them move. But um, this one I saw last time, there were no faces at all. They, the faces were kind of almost melted away. And I thought, well, that's different. He he normally focuses in on those like eyes and things yeah. like this this one hasn't even got any eyes but they was it was still very much a christian hook painting so that's what i mean he hasn't changed his style he's started to add some interesting elements to his style which is exactly what i mean by evolve rather than change yeah and i think even if you are um when i say a well-known artist what i mean is you've got this very um, defined style so say like you people know what you do mm. you don't have to show this thing that you're trying out this experiment you're doing it doesn't have to be public no. i know you're telling people about it but you wouldn't you don't have to and you might just need a very brief change so yep. you might be trying these bums out um try it and it might be a direction that you absolutely love and you think, yes, I'm going to do more of this. I just or want to point it... out that my style change isn't about bums. Like, <laughs> next, next, It's only this, these particular two paintings that involve bums. <laughs> I, I suspect that none of my others will. <laughs> <laughs> but you might decide that the way you're painting them is not the direction you want at all. Or you might decide that, okay, I, I really like this experiment, but, you know, I did really like what I was doing before you know it's almost that thing where you just need a jolt yes and then you know okay yeah I do like what I was painting before you feel refreshed or what you might do is pull in just a small element of what you do with your bums yeah (laughs) I'm gonna keep saying bums into your existing works so you might say oh okay I kind of let them go blurry on the edges of the rounded bit of my bum <laughs> and so I'm gonna try doing that yeah in the end do you know what I mean you might pull something in from the experiments it might not be the end place it might just be a little detour you make on your yes. path yeah yeah I mean I've already I've already got it's quite interesting though because whereas normally I know what I'm going to be doing I already find myself thinking right what's next after this oh I could do this and I could do this and maybe now I'll try it this way and so it yeah it's quite it's quite cool I, I and I start seeing things in my head of like oh how could I how could I do that and but I'm the the bones of my painting will be the same as what I'm doing but it'll be there'll be a very different surrounding to it if you like yeah yeah so when do I get to see this anyway? Oh, I think I need, I think before I show you, I really do have to make it a bit looser. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be telling me off. You that's not wild. <laughs> no, uh, tell you the truth. I feel like the bones of this one is done. Apart from I haven't done the the main bit, but oh, the, can I see the it then? Bit, but no. What I mean is the when I say <laughs> I do, I mean the under, you know, the under part of it. But I want to do some bits over the top to make it a bit more okay. add a bit more interest before I show it to you okay. <laughs> yeah I do um yeah anyway did you finish then have I yes I did finish yes yeah so if you feel you're ready to shake things up do it slowly um you don't have to do it you know if you go too radical too quickly what you don't want is you don't want to find yourself feeling like a complete beginner again because that could cause you to completely lose your confidence and think oh what who am I to call myself an artist I can't do this you want to avoid that feeling because we've all had we've all been there you know we've all had that when we we're first starting out and, and it's it's a scary feeling so you know 
don't don't think right I'm going to do this and that and and I've never tried this before and I've never tried that before and keep keep an element of who you are in it and and just baby steps baby steps is fine you don't have to do anything fast you know I was going to say following on from that just change well like one thing at a time mm. like don't suddenly switch from watercolor landscapes to abstract oil paintings unless of course it's something you've really got this major urge to do and I say that and there we are a new swap from oil painting to mixed media bums from bottles <laughs> So, there's still so, room. there's still be an oil painting in there don't you worry yeah so but yeah so, so i say it, it might be too radical to go from something so different like a watercolor landscape to a, to an abstract oil but then again you might love it that's the thing yeah if you're not sure where to start one good thing to do is to set yourself a challenge to do something you've always wanted to try but you were afraid to in case you failed and then say to yourself you know i'm not going to share this I'm not going to share this and then if you want to share it at the end you can but that way you're you're more likely to experiment a bit more if you if you're not going to put it out there for all to see you know you want to feel comfortable with it yourself before you start sort of like making it public I guess or um of course you can find an existing art challenge to help you discover new things and of course that's what we've got loads of on our website every every month <laughs> so if you haven't already Definitely take a lot of a look at those because how many messages, Tara, do we get, or how many comments on Instagram do we get saying, Oh, I'm so glad I found this challenge. It's taught me this, it's taught me that. And you know, so definitely get involved with some challenges if you are not quite sure what direction you want to take, because you will learn things that you didn't know about or you perhaps didn't think you'd enjoy. Yeah, and we have these challenges where we say, like, you know, do a daily painting of so and so, but we only say that to try and set some guidelines. We honestly don't mind at all if you come in and you do one painting a week or you come in and say, I'm just going to do this for a week. That's completely fine. Yeah. The, the whole point of them is just to give you, it's instead of something pulling something out of the air, if you don't know what to do, it's just to give you a start, basically. Um, another thing you can try doing is taking a course. And I think a good one to do is something with multiple teachers or to take multiple courses maybe because that way you'll get new inspiration from different places and I always think it's much much better to get inspiration from multiple sources yeah because you you don't want to copy another artist's style what you want to do is take little elements from lots and lots of different places and of course, throw in some of your own that come along out of the way because then it, it's like you. Is it is who, who's the guy who does um, that artist stealing? Oh, well, Austin Cleon. That's it. Yeah, like I mean, he artist. wrote a whole book, didn't he? Yeah. Still, yeah, still like an artist. And basically, that's what he's saying. You, no one really comes up with a totally original. They just find different ways to combine things. If you kind of like try and pluck a style off the shelf it's not really you it's not really your work it's you trying to emulate someone else's and I don't think that does anyone any favors not the artist you're trying to emulate and not not yourself it doesn't give you your you're denying yourself a chance of becoming your own unique voice and that's something to avoid so definitely yeah take elements of things and I think there's no harm is though like if you if you see an artist you like and they're doing a course do do the thing do mm. draw like them mm. there's nothing wrong with that doing your first few like them and then you then you analyze what you've done and you think okay what do i like about what they've done oh okay i like their broken up line yeah or i like this and then you'll say oh but you know i'm not necessarily that keen on their color palette yeah that sort of thing that's how i would look at it anyway yeah yeah, yeah i agree um Okay, so uh, if you do decide to make a change, you have to give yourself permission for it to go wrong, which is what I've done. I'm like, if it goes wrong, it goes wrong, it's fine. It might take a while to get your head around what you're trying to achieve. So, you know, don't expect your first few attempts to be as well received as your usual work if you choose to share it. And don't expect you to be delighted by your first few attempts because it's going to take some time you might be lucky it might just happen for you I don't know but I'm fully expecting to look at this and think oh I don't know about this or you know oh okay yes I like it but I'm not ready to show it yet I I don't know but it can go wrong don't don't think it won't go wrong because it probably will And, and you just have to get your head around that 
I sometimes think it's a blessing if it doesn't work out that well. How come? And, and I tell you why, because, and, and this has happened to me before where I try, I try something new mm. and I do something and it's like, oh God, I really like that. Because then you're living up to the expectation of a first piece already. You've already only just started something new and then you become much more controlled. Yeah, because you're trying to keep it. Yeah, because you're trying to keep it. Whereas if you do something, you think, okay, I like elements of that. You know, it's not perfect, but I think that's a much better way for your first first few almost. Mm. And I also think you need to be prepared to ruin a painting. And I know that sounds weird, but I think we can get so that we can always become too controlled in ourselves that we're trying this new thing, but we're, we're scared to push it. And so if you do find that it's becoming too controlled, I think almost like Christian Hook takes his, whatever he takes, a knife or credit card and just breaks up the surface. Mm. I think sometimes we've got to do that because otherwise we just end up repeating ourselves. We're already doing what we're doing anyway. Yeah. We've just we've got to be brave. Yes. Yeah. Sounds like with these really, you know, with these soldiers or something. Because if, you, if you're at this crossroads and you don't change now, are you ever going to change? So I just think it's worth completely pushing it and risking, risking ruining that piece. And like we said before, it doesn't have to be forever. And you can still take the skills you learn and mm. your existing skills and use those, you know, going forward. And, and also, you know, it's like I was saying earlier, I've spent, I don't know, 80 quid on a couple of canvases. And that seems like a a bit of a a risk when it comes to the fact that they're they're very likely to go wrong and I won't like them. But what that £80 is really, what I need to look at it as, is a, a, a classroom. So those two canvases are a classroom. They're at my classroom where I'm going in and I'm trying things out or trying something new out. And... You know, I've already gone to one canvas and thought, oh, yeah, well, I, I quite like that. But actually, I, I'm starting to think now that it might be more interesting if I did it at a different angle. So essentially, I've got a very similar painting on two canvases because I just wanted to try it at a different angle. And then I realized, mm, yeah, actually, I like that one. But I'm still going to carry on working on them both. But the actual main element of it, I'm going to make different. But it's but I'm sort of thinking of that as not a waste. If this goes wrong, it's not a waste of money. If you if I'd have paid to go to a lesson, a couple of lessons, a few lessons are in this, then I would have paid that anyway. I've just chosen it in my classroom to be the canvas I'm working on. The thing is, if you don't ever try it, you'll never know, will you? No. Shall we read out yes. the answers to our previous question? Uh, yep. Yeah. And that was what do you do to get yourself motivated and interested in your work? Now, you were going to answer me this question, weren't you? And I know the answer now. Try something new. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, apparently the same goes for me as well. <laughs> yeah. So shall we read up the answers? Yes. And um, I have got Maya Casaneda. Okay, challenge yourself and keep myself accountable in my calendar. Yeah, that's so true. We all find that really hard, don't we? Uh, Oh, I like this one as well. Imaginings by Karen. She has a big love heart and she's put, listen to great podcasts like Kicking the Creatives. (laughs) And I said said on Instagram, Karen's our favourite, isn't she? Oh, she is now. (laughs) (laughs) I've got Roxy Dobbs. Staying active in the group and committing to a challenge. Keeps me motivated and interested in learning, growing and creating through art. I know I've said it before, but this group is such an inspiration to me. Thank you all. Oh, that's so nice. It's so it nice. Is. Yeah. Karen Taylor, experiment without expecting any end result. Bit like me, really. I love doing this. I can spend hours playing and the results are mostly awful. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> but, I, but I can't wait to do it again. I believe I'm learning. Yes, you absolutely are, Karen. And absolutely, your results are not mostly awful. I've got Sue Watson. She says, I just keep going. That's, yeah, that's a big key to everything, isn't it? Just get back on the horse. When it goes wrong, just get back on the horse. Kim Hollenby, I hadn't really drawn before, but in January I joined a January sketchbook challenge that had a prompt every day and a group to share with. I decided to share everything. Then she's put this big laughy face. The group had quite a range of skills and experience. And I haven't looked back. I did decide not to judge my work in any way for that month. 
Now I only say what I would do differently. Criticism is a killer for creativity. Oh, yeah, it really is. And that's right. You know, what would I do differently? I'm already looking at the stuff I'm doing. Thinking, right, what would I do differently next time? So, yeah, that's how we, that's how we evolve, isn't it? Brilliant. Yeah. I've got Kim Hine and she says, I post all my work in here, even if the work, even the ones I'm not happy with, because it's a learning journey and keeps me accountable. Also, I list it in my daily journal so that I have a to do it to tick off. I can't go to bed unless it's all ticked off. And she actually showed a picture of her notebook. Oh, really? Do you know, Kim, yeah. Kim's been um, really productive this year. I think she's pretty much, I don't know if she's been doing nearly every challenge, hasn't she, since January I don't the 1st? Know. I think so. I think she said something about that on Facebook group. All oh, right. She's been doing like, because um, she kind of went AWOL for a little bit. <laughs> AWOL. I mean <laughs> AWOL. <laughs> she disappeared off the group for a little while. I think she was very busy. She travels a lot, doesn't she? And yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure this year she's been doing loads. So yeah, hats off, Kim. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get get. I mean, obviously, the more you do, the more you learn, the quicker you learn. So yeah, I have got Jessica Wakefield Vetter. Honestly, I work on a few different projects at a time and not all in the same genre. For example, I spend each day writing, editing, drawing, or painting, and now that the weather is warmer, gardening. All creative pursuits, but moving between them keeps me interested in all of them. Sounds lovely. Okay, I've got Krista Crescenzo. A balance between creating what I'm comfortable with and experimenting with new subjects and materials. That's perfect. Yep, yep. Andy W. Art, podcasts. Listening to them when I do mundane work helps remind me of a more creative world, unless I'm listening to climate podcasts. In that case, we're all doomed. Oh, yeah. Don't be laughing. Oh, no. It's too scary listening to those. <laughs> I've got Margaret Gray, and she says, when I'm not working, I try to keep connected to the art world by reading, looking at tutorials, and collect- connecting with nature. Having a number of projects on the go helps to keep me motivated. And I hope you're feeling better, Margaret, by the way. So you've given me an essay now. <laughs> of course I did. I wasn't going to get myself to read this. It was obvious when that came out. You were getting this one. <laughs> Jackie Husipalutsky. I can never say your name right, Jackie. I think you should send us a recording of, of your name so that we can learn how to say it properly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she says, sometimes it's so hard to stay motivated. I'm my own worst critic and I'm very adept at procrastinating too. Number one, the monthly challenges are really useful for trying out new ideas and a good way to not get rusty. I amazed myself by completing a whole month of May kicking the creative challenge three years ago, and that boosted my motivation no end. I was so proud that I stuck it out. I've completed a lot of other challenges since, including the 50 faces, which nearly had me beat at one point. I've discovered that creativity breeds creativity, that putting in the time and effort really pays off. There's progress in showing up for art as much as possible even if it's one pace forward and sometimes two back. I now know what artists mean when they say we're on a journey. It really is like a journey. Sometimes I'm in the cattle cart on a bumpy ride, but I know I'm going forward. Ha ha. Number two. (laughs) Next, I'd say that getting inspiration from varied sources is good. Museums, books, Pinterest, nature, going outside and really observing shapes and colours, etc. My mind has a myriad file. Is that right? Myra? Yeah, yeah. I don't know quite what it means. Yeah. Uh, Number three, also keep your materials in easily accessible places. Always have a small kit on hand to make a sketch. Uh, make space in your home just for art. I had one square meter at first in the corner of our bedroom. Sometimes, oh no, I, 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 need to, I feel the need to say number four. <laughs> number four. Yeah. Sometimes I need to switch off completely from everything art related. I feel oversaturated with it all and I just need a couple of days A well. After that, I feel more motivated. And it's funny you should say that actually, Jackie, because yes, I know what you mean by that. Sometimes you do get oversaturated and you do need to step back a bit. And I think um, the last painting I did, the crushed Coke can, which I kind of called a self-portrait, was pretty much how I was feeling at the time. And, uh, yeah, I haven't and, – and, I, you know, I took a two or three weeks sort of away from it at all just before I started on this new 
new journey. So sometimes that's really important just just to clear the cobwebs, blow the cobwebs away. There, Stevens, I allow the rest of my life to inconvenience me and keep me from being creative so that when I'm ultimately able to set aside time to paint, it's a glorious moment of relief. Vicky Campo, I have a really tough time finding motivation, but I tend to look for challenges to keep me active. I've got Michael Beckett and he says, keeping myself motivated is a big problem for me. I get bored during doing the same thing all the time. The best remedy is switching styles and mediums. And that decision usually comes from inspiration for other artists. I also have other hobbies, card making, programming, that I switch back and forth from to keep things interesting. And I've got Rob Myers. Take photos, lots of photos. It's more of a journal for me. I take pictures of scenery, textures, quotes, anything that resonates really. And sometimes I incorporate them into my art. Anyway, we have got a brand new question for you, which is, uh, as we know, Picasso was famous for his blue period. In fact, he had four periods, I believe. Uh, So as an artist, how many periods have you had? And that's basically what I put to begin with. As an artist, how many periods have you had? And Tara picked up on it. She said, you, you're you not going to put it like that, are you? <laughs> but no, there's a long version. <laughs> but how am I going to put that in the question image? Yeah, I don't know. I don't envy you in that task, Tara. I don't know. No, thank you. <laughs> As always, you can tweet us your answers, Kit Creators, or let us know in the Facebook group, which if you haven't joined, I highly suggest you do. We'll put the question up there and also on the Facebook page if we can fit it in because it's so bloody long. <laughs> and also, of course, on our Instagram page, Kicking the Creators. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that gives you the kick in the creatives you needed. Don't forget to pop over to our website, uh, kickinthecreatives.com, to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And, of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please um, leave us a little review or just a star rating or share the episode. If you, if, you know, anything that you can do to help spread the word would be great. Also, don't forget to check out and subscribe to our Kicking the Creatives newsletter to keep updated on podcasts and challenges. And if you enjoy what we do and you'd like to help support us here at Kicking the Creatives, you can do so by buying us a coffee and you can find the link to that on our website. Anyway, that is it for today and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode and if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. I was saying just briefly, we were talking before we went on, because you had problems with your mic, that's why it was briefly. Normally it's about three quarters of an hour. Yeah. (laughs) This time we spent most of the time with you trying to fix your mic. Yeah. (laughs) But briefly before we started, um, you were saying that, I can't remember what I was going to say. What was I going to say tomorrow? (laughs) (laughs) I lost my track when I was thinking about your microphone. Talking about being on the right platform for your art. Oh, I can't Uh, remember. I can't remember. Let's move on. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Right. Anyway, let's let's talk about what this this is actually about. This um this podcast. So um, it's about. Can you remember what it was actually about? (laughs) (laughs) 